and there were several others that were exceptions as well. But generally, the super wealthy, absolutely, categorically, do not want anyone else to know their secrets of success. They do not want competition. As a matter of fact, the super wealthy, overwhelmingly, categorically, throughout history, have always believed that wealth is genetic. That you have to have a certain genetic makeup, a certain DNA structure, a certain DNA vibration in order to be wealthy. And if you don't fall into that category, you're not entitled to wealth. You're not entitled to know the secrets. And even if you did, they believe, you wouldn't be able to apply it anyway because your genetics aren't programmed for success. Now, some of you may have a hard time believing that, but that throughout history has been true. As a matter of fact, Donald Trump even said it. When you ask him, what is the key to success? And he goes, genetics. He actually said, genetics. You're born with it. He actually said it. Henry Ford said it. Go back and look at the movie, uh, uh, Titanic, at the turn of the century. You had the first class cabin and then you had the second class and third class people. And they never dined together. They never socialized together. And listen to some of those, those conversations. If you read books back in the 1800s, 1700s, or, or even the turn of the century, and you listen to wealthy people like Henry Ford, they always believed that privilege, wealth, was specifically designed and meant to be exclusive to the elite class of people. And that's why they never married outside of their class. The class meaning they had to be wealthy. So if you had a daughter, your daughter had to marry somebody who was from a wealthy family, who had the proper genetics. In England, we call it blue bloods. So throughout history, genetics was a major key. So the point I'm trying to make is the super wealthy around the world will never tell you this publicly, but they believe that the secrets of success, the knowledge that they have, should be kept exclusively within their groups. And that's why secret societies were put together. There are many secret societies that aren't so secret. Uh, the Freemasons was one of the most uh, prevalent throughout history. And you can go to virtually any city around the world, or specifically in America, and you see Masonic lodges. They're huge. Many of them today are turned into, uh, in Chicago, for example, the beautiful Masonic lodge downtown, I think is a Bloomingdale's now. So there were a, a massive, beautiful structures, Masonic lodges, where Masons would gather and share their secrets. And there were varying degrees in the Masons. Uh, some of you are familiar with the phrase, um, you're giving the guy the third degree. Well, that comes from the Freemasons, because when you got to the third degree, you were, uh, had a series of questions asked you. You were drilled with questions. That's one of the procedures done at the third degree. The highest level in the Masons is 33 degree. Now, some of you met our friend um, who was a 33-degree Mason, and he's come forth to share his knowledge and give this information from the Masonic Lodge that never has never been before released. So the information you're getting today is obviously from the people that you've met and myself and, and so forth. So secret societies were put together where the elite class could, could meet with one another and share their secrets and keep those secrets first amongst their families, but secondly amongst their peers, people within their, quote, genetic pool. That's the history. Now, I'm not a racist and I'm not saying any things about whether this is true or not true. I'm just giving you kind of a history lesson here. So who do you listen to? Well, you can't listen to people who write the books. You can't listen to people who teach the seminars because 99% of them really don't know this information. They're making it up. They're, they're believing that what they're saying is true, but they're teaching you theory. And those theories really don't work because in their life, 
they haven't proved that they have worked because they don't have the results to show. It's all theory. You can't listen to people who are writing books on how to get rich because 99% of them, number one, aren't rich. Those that do have some money don't have hundreds of millions of dollars, so they're not super rich and they're teaching you how to get rich. But when you ask them how did they make the money that they have, they may make a, a million dollars a year or half a million dollars a year or $300,000 a year, which a lot of you think is huge money. And I have to tell you, that's not huge money. But when you ask these people, how did they make their money? They will tell you that they made all their money teaching people how to make money. So all they're doing is they're salesmen. They're selling books and tapes and seminars. They've never really done anything in real life at all. There's a, a book my wife was uh, reading uh, that's in Russian. It's not translated into English. And this book is a series of books by this Russian author. And the last book is a book on money, on how to make money. It's only in Russian currently. My publishing company may be in the process of uh, translating that into English. Because the last book about money, the author said, I wrote this book about money years ago, and I decided not to publish it until I became super wealthy. Because using this information, if it was true, then I would be able to make huge amounts of money. And then after I used my own information and the information I learned from others to make huge money, then I would publish the book. Because then I wouldn't need the money from the royalties of the book. I would give them away. Which is exactly what he did. He became super wealthy and then he published the book, which makes a lot of sense. So who do you listen to? You can't listen to people who write books on how to make your desires come true or produce home study courses on CD or teach seminars because 99% of them, it hasn't worked in, the, in real life. You can't listen to people who teach you how to make money in books and seminars. Now, not that all of them are bad. I'm going to actually give you a bunch of stuff that, that, that's really good, but you don't have to waste your time on the junk because the people who write this stuff, they ain't rich. They don't make, haven't made hundreds of millions of dollars. It hasn't worked for them and they made all their money teaching you how to make money. So they're giving you really bad information. And you can't read books by the super wealthy, like the Warren Buffetts of the world or the Donald Trumps or the Bill Gates, because number one, they don't write their own books. They don't even know the information that's in there. So you're not getting information directly from them. Number one, and number two, they will never tell you this. They'll deny it, but it's true. They do not want you to know the true secrets because they do not want competition. As a matter of fact, and this will scare you, but it's true, what they will categorically do is they will give you wrong information so that you will achieve a little bit of success, but not that much success. Isn't that interesting? They'll give you a little bit of success, but not that much success. So they'll give you wrong information on purpose to virtually sabotage your ultimate success to keep you as a worker instead of that which is making ultimately millions. So who do you listen to? Well, some of you are saying, well, I know what you're saying. Uh, you, should, you should listen to me. <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't invent any of this information. I'm just, I'm just the messenger. I'm just the teacher. I learned this information. None of it's mine. I've learned it, I've applied it, and I've taught it. Where did I get this information from? And where is the information that you're going to be receiving today and tomorrow? Where did it come from? Why well, mention secret societies? Nothing to be scared about when we talk about secret societies. <clears throat> no conspiracy theories, no mystical stuff, no Satan worshiping, nothing like that. Just a group of people would get together and basically share information within, quote, the gene pool. That's really what it comes down to. And again, this is historical facts. The elite class set up societies where they could work together and benefit one another as a group. 
They believed that wealth <clears throat> and they believed that this knowledge should be kept amongst themselves and they believed that it was genetic in nature. And so they set up societies. Freemasons, as I mentioned, was one. Uh, a very famous one is at Yale University. Yale University, very famous American university, uh, has a society called the Skull and Bones. Now, the Skull and Bones has a uh, building. You can see it. People go in and out of the building, and they meet at places. It's common knowledge. If you're a member of the Skull and Bones, you don't hide it. You're proud of that membership. President Bush, John Kerry, the senator, many politicians, Supreme Court justices. As a matter of fact, the CIA was started by the Skull and Bones. Uh, there's a great movie with Matt Damon about that called The Good Shepherd. Watch it. You can see a little bit about the Skull and Bones. It talks a, lo a little bit about that. And they give you some inside information of how the meetings work and how the networking works amongst members. So there are lots of secret societies all around the world. The Illuminati is one. And one of the largest ones, <clears throat> which is actually kind of at the, at the pinnacle, is called the Brotherhood. And the Brotherhood is a unique society because it, it keeps its membership very secret and it keeps its existence very secret. Many members of Skull and Bones are also members of the Brotherhood. Many members of Freemasons, when they reach uh, 33 degree, bec become members of the Brotherhood, of the Illuminati, and various other organizations around the world become members of the brother Brotherhood. <clears throat> it is a society of people that have gotten together that share information and share secret knowledge of how the universe works and how this planet works and how as a human being you can be happy, healthy and make your desires come true and go through this life in an exciting, joyous, adventurous, fulfilling way based on your desires and your wishes. Now that's key. It's your desires and your wishes. Now, every person on the planet has different desires and different dreams and different wishes. Some of you think that whatever dream you have, everyone shares the same dream. That's not true. Some of you think that every desire that you have, everyone should have the same desire. And that's not true. Guess what? Some of you are looking around this place and, say, and saying, I want this, you know, oh my God, I want this. And other of, you, other of you are saying, this is too big. I don't want 200 st staff members working for me. So each one of you have a different desire. Some of your, your desire is to have a log cabin. And that's where you want to live and have a, a little, little, you know, garden out in the back. Some of your desire is just to have a nice small little home with a, with a brand new car. And that's your desire and that's your dream and that's your wish and, and that's what you want to do. Some of you have dreams of being the best parent in the world. Some of you have a dream of being the best policeman in the world. Some of you have a dream of being a happy, wonderful fireman. Some of you want to be a doctor or a nurse or a teacher or a pharmacist or uh, a, a, a surgeon. Some of you have different goals. Some of you want to be a great cook. Some of you have different dreams and goals. There is no reason to think that every person has a dream or a goal of being a billionaire.